My guest today is John Galloway. John, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. How yeah, long has it been? It's been a while. So, yeah, Jesse and I were on your show. It must have been six or seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're finally back. I've been, I've been thinking you. about you a lot. Yep. And we're in Stockholm. Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I love Stockholm. It's one of my favorite cities. I'm, I'm really enjoying it, too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I learned recently that you are part of something called the De .NET Foundation. Yeah. In fact, I just recently heard that the, that was a thing. Yep. Uh, but it turns out not only is it not a new thing, and that that they, you're also not new to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just new to me, is all. Yeah. Well, so I've been part of this for two years. And I've been the executive director of the .NET Foundation, um, which sounds like maybe more impressive. I, I mean, yeah. So I, you say executive director, I hear benevolent dictator. Right. Right. So, so my job is to handle the day-to-day -day stuff for the .NET Foundation. I actually report to the board of directors. Mm -hmm. um, How big is the board? Well, so the board, until just recently, until March, was three people. Hmm. And it was uh, two people, two Microsoft employees, and one that was appointed by Microsoft. So Oren Novotny was our community board, uh, okay. board member. He's a, an MVP, not yeah. an employee. Okay. Yep, and an RD, and he's, um, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, and... Then our other Microsoft board members were Scott Hunter and Miguel de Acasa. Mm -hmm. So great people, um, but they were they were both Microsoft employees. So we actually made some big changes to have a community electorate uh, board. Okay, so that's where I first heard about it on Twitter. People were campaigning yeah, to get on this board. Exactly. So so we we opened it up to seven board seats. One is Microsoft appointed, which is Beth Massey. Okay, and then. The six others were um, people became members of the .NET Foundation, and then those members could run for a board seat. And mm -hmm. so, out of that, we had we had around f f almost 500 members, and we had 45 people campaigning for a seat, and we ended up with six people. So, cool. um, yeah. So the the six people. Let's make sure I can name off the top of my head here. So we have John Skeet, we have Sarah Chips, we have Iris Klassen, uh, Phil Hack. Uh, Oren Novotny and Ben Adams, and I think that's... I don't think I know Ben, but everybody else else is pretty darn smart. Yeah, and Ben Adams is really smart. He's actually been doing a lot of stuff to optimize .NET Core. Mm -hmm. So he got involved in... He's submitted tons of really high-quality pull requests that have affected... Uh, first, working with just the the web performance of mm -hmm. ASP.NET Core, okay. and then a lot of that is trickled back into just .NET in general. So oh. yeah, he's a lot of the reason why .NET Core is so fast. He's close to the metal, it sounds. Yes, like. <laughs> very much. Yeah. So .NET Foundation, what is it? What's his mission? What does it do? Yeah. So the original reason it was established uh, back in 2014 was to support collaboration for open source .NET. So Microsoft, you know, .NET had been closed source and a Microsoft product. And when they open sourced it, they wanted other companies and individuals to be able to collaborate. And that's a lot easier when you have kind of a third party that's holding the copyright. So it's, a, it's an open source nonprofit and it's um, you know, supported and founded by Microsoft, but it's external to Microsoft. Um, so the kind of you know, first thing that it was established for is just that holding the copyright and both projects were contributed by Microsoft. And so at that time there's legal paperwork signed um, so that, that you know, Microsoft holds, or Microsoft donates that source code to the .NET Foundation. Okay. And then every uh, code check-in, you know, every commit on GitHub is um, actually is, goes through a CLA process. So it's a contributor license agreement. Okay. So, so if I submit a pull request to update something, even like Microsoft Docs or, you know, uh, Core CLR, Core FX, any of those things, I have to have signed this CLA, and if I haven't, it bounces me over to a page, and it just—it's a one pager. It's really so this is easy. a legal document. When yeah. When you say sign, you mean in the old traditional sense. That, well, it's not or, on paper though. Oh this yeah, but still, not, but it's not—it's uh, not like a uh, certificate signature. This is a. Yeah. <laughs> it is, is. It is an actual. I have to read, understand, and yeah. say yes. I certify yeah. that I, I, I'm giving this. And the, part of the reason for this is for, for a company to be able to use source code and be sure that they have the rights to it and be sure that, you know, all that, um, w w you need to kind of check that pedigree of the source being okay. checked in. Yeah. Are, so, are you guys responsible for guaranteeing that pedigree? Well, yes, to the extent that, I mean, somebody could lie on okay. their CLA, you know, but I mean, to the, to the best of our ability, right? It's, it's You're doing of, your due diligence. Exactly, yeah, exactly. 
So, so that was the original reason it, it was formed. But then we have this nonprofit that supports opensource.net. So we do other things. We have other community projects that have joined, XUnit and Unit, JSON.net, Identity Server, mm. AutoMapper. Just, I mean, there's a list. I'm, I'm naming some kind of uh, some ones that are well known to a lot of yeah. developers, but there's a lot of them in there. There, you know, CMSs. We have Orchard and DNN platform, and okay. you know, yeah. So are there what hundreds or are there thousands? What's the no, no? It, it's under a hundred. Okay. Um, we're we're probably at the. I I haven't updated the count recently. It's probably mm. around seventy five. Is that where you want to be? No, we want to be more. Okay. Um, and part of that, that's part of the reason uh, for expanding our board. Up until now. Um, uh, the way it's worked is me as executive director has done most of the the grunt work mm -hmm. and then I've gotten permission from the board to say hey we'd like to add these projects or we'd like to make these changes or whatever and w the reason that we had or a reason that we had a community board election is these people campaigned and they said hey if I'm elected I would like to help you know make it easier for projects to join or I would help I would like to expand our meetup reach or I would like to make uh you know work on net outreach so that you know we're reaching more you know gender ethnicity geographic diversity and all that hmm. so so anyways people said hey i would like to get more involved and do these things so our scaling you know my my evil master plan is uh -huh. expand from me to now we have a board of seven people plus me and then we're forming teams to say hey who, when we, we, we did this as our, after our elections, we had a few meetings and we're like, what do we want to do? Okay, now that we've boiled that down to these like six or seven areas, outreach, who wants to be involved? And people raise their hands, you know, and, and we said, okay, this is your team. And so now our next step is we're writing up our roadmaps and actually plan is next week to say, okay, now how uh, we've got these roadmaps, how do we involve members? So we've got a membership base of about 500 now, and mm -hmm. we can say, Hey members, we formed this team. Here's your leaders on you know that are board members. Who wants to join in? And um, and we've already had people saying like, how can I get involved? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I? So yeah. So, so the members uh, historically they were open source contributors. Yeah. And now you're asking them to, or you're uh, maybe they're asking you to uh, to get more involved in some of these other initiatives. That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. They've actually been. Uh, some of them are people that campaign for a board seat okay. and they said, Hey, I would like to, you know, do this thing. And then they said, you know, really, regardless of uh, if I win the election, it's still that thing is important. I want to do this thing. Yeah. And then we've had people, you know, people bump into me at conferences. People are like, Hey, I care about open source.net. I care about and a lot of different things. You know, I care about these specific ways I would like to get more involved. And this is our model. Cause over the years, people would say, I would like to help out. I'd like to get more involved. And we didn't really have a model and a policy and a yeah. way, you know, all that. So now we do. No, I've been yeah. through that. I used to run a user group. And yeah. at a, on a smaller scale, that exact same issue uh, raises its head. Yeah. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm doing everything myself. I want to delegate, but boy, how do, what do I delegate? How do I know how do we do done? it? Yeah. And and how, do you do it in, how do you do it in a way that's not like a. It, I'd like to have like a little bit of an official thing. Like we have, here's our team charter and here's our roadmap right. and here's the members and here's what's expected right. as opposed to like, oh yeah, somebody said they're doing this thing, you know, and it's yeah, not. Have yeah. some control over it and find out if it's successful or not. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and that doesn't happen overnight. Um, at least didn't for me. Anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, so tell me about some of these uh, these new initiatives that you're doing, like uh, the 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 meetup part of it. That sounds really interesting to yeah, me as a community, yeah. a community so, guy. So when we started looking at this, actually, I took over um, the executive director before me was Martin Woodward, who'd done a fantastic job of kind of like looking at what is our meetup footprint you know okay. like so over the well, years that's not a new thing then well it's something that's been some time in building okay so when we looked at you know going back i got my start in speaking you you mentioned you were running a, a user group yep. or and and i got my start in speaking at, at the local user group and it's been it's been important for a lot of developers that you know conferences are great but hey something local that i can go to for free regularly is, yep. is great so um, we started looking at meetups because that's been kind of the primary way, way that user groups are organized lately. Mm -hmm. And when we searched for .NET meetups, we found it wasn't consistent and the search results were not good and it wasn't very organized. Okay. Uh, we compared it with other 
ecosystems. You know, we look at, you know, like PHP user groups, PHP for and Node and Google developer groups and AWS and Docker and all that. And mm -hmm. all of those, almost all of them had a Meetup Pro account. And then, hmm. yeah, and so by Meetup Pro, you have kind of like a group of groups. And okay. so I can say, hey, you join our, our .NET Meetup group and now somebody can search and they'll get like all of them and we can go and look and we see the metrics and we can also communicate out to them huh. and we can say here's some content for your group or here's something coming up so we we did that uh it's been a year and a half now and we're up to almost 300 groups worldwide okay and over 200,000 members um and and so that's that's step one of the meetups so is, the meetups can join this uh foundation's yeah um, group and they get the benefits of having a paid meetup yeah okay. we pay for their meetup pro okay. um and then can send them swag and all that and then uh I used, so to be, I used to be on something called inetta i was on the board of inetta yeah and before the meetup was a thing and we tried to do things like that so but this but it is was just us yeah and so this is a shot at doing that in a long-term supported yeah. way so inetta was really cool um, but it was supported by Microsoft marketing money mm. and Microsoft marketing money and teams and, and people change year to year sure. and they're not always going to be, you know, Microsoft doesn't always have the same marketing budget for .NET and all that. So the goal here is .NET foundation is always going to care about .NET, right? Yeah. And so, so this is kind of through .NET foundation. Oh, and, and you mentioned too, like Ineta did more than just support the groups it also helped like with things like speaker grants yep. and stuff so that's kind of our long range plan is to actually fill that spot that i need to used to oh cool yeah so oh yeah <laughs> uh, what about uh you mentioned some other initiatives here that um <sighs> mm. yeah let me dig in i mean so there's several and i'll miss some but we, you know one is outreach and looking at how we can uh, how we can reach more people. So that's reaching, you know, students. Um, so we say outreach, you want to get them interested in open source or get them interested in .NET or what's the? Yeah, both, both? <laughs> really. Okay. So um, well, well you, when you outreach, you, you, you typically have a unified message. What is yeah. that unified message? Yeah, really, uh, it's reaching more people with open source .NET. So, okay. so and, and this is not, as there are other things we're looking at as far as more, open source this is more just kind of like how do we hook up people with their local meetup how do we make sure that students know about dot net how do we you know how do we get involved and there are already people that are out there doing dot net you know i talk to people like in africa or people that are you know like women coders and stuff that just aren't hooked in with the community mm. and so let's like get them involved if, if oh, they absolutely. would like to be yeah yeah so so that there's outreach there's um there's that meetup um focus there's project onboarding we'd like to make it easier for more projects to join okay you mentioned before like right now we're at 75 could we be at a lot more yeah that would be great you mm -hmm. know and then also could we have some other models like right now there's one way for a project to join .NET foundation and it really works for established projects with a long-term roadmap and a full team uh it would be great to ha scale that both up and down. So we'd love to have a model that is a lightweight thing where it's like, hey, .NET Foundation, uh, so I don't know the proper term for this, but you know, a project, uh, like a, a junior project, you know, mm -hmm. like a small project and it's like, hey, this project has a good future and you know, we, we'd like to help them out, but we don't wanna go through the whole thing, you know, okay. and like, and then also having a thing for projects that are, you know, if they're, a more advanced way of you know so more mature way for projects to join so for instance a project that has a, a full like lts like long-term support and they have gone through some additional checks and that's necessary in cases for some companies to use them they actually want to know like that you're going to have have done more advanced like patent scanning or okay. more advanced, you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. I have uh, consulted at companies that just wouldn't use open source at all. Right, right. Because they were worried there might be some little bit that contributed that was stolen from somebody else. Yeah. And now they're liable because it's... Well, you know, software. that's one other area I want to mention is we have a, a group that's focusing on corporate 
uh, corporate relationships. Okay. And so part of that is we, we introduced a new thing called corporate sponsors. And corporate Microsoft was the only company that contributed to the .NET Foundation up until now. Mm, so they financially. Financially. Okay. Yep. And there are costs, you know, there's legal costs. We spend thousands of dollars on legal costs and, and on meetup pro fees and mm -hmm. on we, we, the, the, the yachts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it is very, believe me, I'm very frugal with everything. And I, but, but there's a lot of stuff where it's like, you know, some conference sponsorships, some there's infrastructure support, there's a m monthly support for all kinds of, you know, software as a service things that we run and stuff. So, uh, so we have now, we introduced in, in December, we had corporate sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So our, our first corporate sponsors to join are uh, Telerik and Insight and Pivotal. Mm -hmm. And we're talking to several more about joining. Um, so, so that is one way we're working with, with companies is they sponsor us and then we, we figure out how we can be more effective in working with them. And one thing we'd also like to do in corporate relations is figure out our messaging and f like break the roadblocks that prevent companies from contributing to open source.net. Mm -hmm. So like you mentioned, there's some people that just, they, they won't use open source right. or they can use open source, but they won't allow their developers to contribute or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Right. And so we have a legal team. We have the project leaders of 75 amazing projects and that's growing uh, so we they have can, they can advise uh, we can advise and let's figure this out means. exactly so so we have we have three or four four more other kind of teams but similar sorts of focus like let's look at solving these big picture strategic things for dotnet open source okay i actually had someone on my show a couple of years ago who you might mm -hmm. know named maggie pint and she was on the board of something called JS Foundation, which sounds pretty similar to this for the JavaScript community. Yeah. Do you talk to other foundations that are doing similar things? So I follow what the other foundations do. Oh. I haven't been like as deeply into um, talking to – I have had some small conversations with them. Hmm. They do serve – communities and they solve the same sorts of problems but they all are tailored towards their own thing so for sure. instance when we found when we made our changes with our community elections we we surveyed all these different foundations out there node and linux and js and uh, we looked at gnome foundation which miguel de casa helped found mm. a long time ago and we actually and there's f sharp foundation there's all so we ended up uh taking a lot of inspiration from gnome foundation for their the way they run their elections. Um, okay. So, for instance, some software foundations charge a lot of, like, millions of dollars a year for, from corporate sponsors, and then they take their, their uh, each corporate sponsor pays a lot of money, and they get a board seat. And it's kind of a, in a way, it can feel a bit like a club for big companies um, so we intentionally didn't do that. The uh, corporate sponsors don't get a board seat and the community elects their leaders and it's, it's very, it's run, you know, it's kind of run by the community. Um, so yeah. I like that. That's uh, that's the spirit of open source. I feel yeah. like it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we've talked a lot of, about a lot of things that people, that spark some interest, like some people will want to uh, maybe become a member. Some mm -hmm. people will want to get involved. Uh, they have a user group and they want to get in this uh, meetup outreach. And, yeah. Uh, where where do people go for more information? The best place is our website, .net foundation org. So D O T N E T foundation org. Um, they can always reach out to me. I'm John Galloway, J O N G A L L O W A Y on Twitter. Um, and uh, and you know the, those are probably the two two top. And there's also our, if they want to email, it's contact contact at foundation org. Excellent. Yeah, John, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope I can talk to you again in another six years or Hopefully so. Soon. Yeah. <laughs>